this country, our courts are the great levelers. In our courts, all men are created equal. I think the Prettyman experience was, was better than anything that I could have ever hoped for. You know, to be able to represent somebody that's never been represented before in a trial context is, is pretty powerful. The E. Barrett Prettyman Fellowship was the first program of its kind. It's, it's an elite post-law graduate fellowship in criminal defense and clinical teaching. The program was founded in 1960 before the decision in Gideon versus Wainwright, where the Supreme Court required counsel in criminal cases. The Prettyman Fellowship seemed to anticipate that there would be a right to counsel for poor people accused of crime and anticipate the need for a core of young, well-trained, devoted defense counsel. Ken Pai, who was the, the driving force behind its creation and the first director, Ken was a, was a visionary who sort of saw the need and the opportunity to create a program that would provide counsel in indigent cases and to use it as a program for study, training, and scholarship. And it was groundbreaking uh, at the time. Criminal law was very much shunned in those days. There was a lot of grumping about why these people should be getting free services and we should be spending government money. And uh, I always had an, an interest in being of some assistance, being part of the solution. I was a Prettyman Fellow from uh, 1967 to 1969. And uh, it was an opportunity that I hadn't gotten. It would have clearly made a significant difference in my life. I was, certainly would have ended up being, a, if I may use the term, more traditional lawyer. Uh, and uh, that wouldn't have been anywhere near as fun, I can assure you. It was a very active time, uh, beginning in the early 60s, certainly in the Civil Rights Movement, also approaching the height of the Vietnam War. It was characterized by some as a period of the criminal law revolution. We had a very, very small office, and then the old law school went at 5th and E. I remember trying uh, sit-in cases on Capitol Hill, First Amendment-type freedom of speech issues. We had many, many Vietnam War protests. The laws were being tested. Uh, that certainly was an intensive experience early on. You know, if I got through two years of the Prettyman program, you know, one could take just about anything. There's no other program of its kind in the world. What's unique about the fellowship is that in contrast to starting your career in a public defender's office, the fellowship affords young lawyers an opportunity to really focus on the work by representing fewer clients, by having close supervision, by being able to take on the kind of issues that one just doesn't have time for, especially when you're a new defender with 100 cases or so. I think it's the most fun way to practice law. You get, you, know, you get to take on the government. You are litigating in your first year constitutional issues that if you go to other places, you are never going to be able to litigate. I think it's a great thing for Georgetown. I think it is one of the things that, that kind of elevates Georgetown's reputation as a provider of clinical legal education. I think the Prettyman experience was, was better than anything that I could have ever hoped for. We look back on our Prettyman days and we recognize just how important um, those classes were. And we used to laugh about, you know, the pedagogical method and the non-directive method and, you know, how many times in a day can I say, you know, what do you think to the students? What do you think? The teamwork that's evident in the program we go over to the courthouse in force. We go and we support each other. If someone has a trial, you can rest assured your classmates were right there with you. Your fellowship supervisors, the faculty in the clinic. I always felt like when we were at that trial moment that I wanted to play that song, um, Fight the Power by you know, Public Enemy, because um, you really had that sense of camaraderie and teamwork um, with you at all times. So we felt like we were collectively representing clients, and I think that's you know, something that I'll never forget about, about the Prettyman program. Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! 
My name is Sean Riley, and I am the Deputy Director of the Bronx Defenders. The Bronx Defenders is a public defender office located in the South Bronx, which is one of the poorest areas of the country, and over-policing is, is rampant here. So to be able to provide the, the quality of defense that we're able to do here is, you know, it's actually kind of poetic. When I started the Bronx Defenders seven years ago, we were a staff of about 45. We're about 150 now, and we're growing to about 230. It's a really uh, collegial atmosphere. It actually reminds me a lot of, of the Pretty Men. I'm one of probably about six Pretty Men Fellows uh, who work at the Bronx Defenders. I think the Pretty Men Fellowship prepared me because I had such a solid foundation. The, there's one thing that I learned at the Prettyman program was learning the case law and knowing the law and knowing it well enough so that when you walked into a courtroom, if there was any sort of surprise or anything that came up that you weren't prepared for, you would know how to handle it. And that's what high volume practice is. High volume practice is basically putting out fires every single day and learning how to triage cases and looking back on it, the Prettyman Fellowship, it was the, the greatest way to start my career as a public defender. It really kind of built a foundation for me that I don't think I would have gotten anywhere else. One of the most important lessons that I took from the program was that there's just never too much that you can do on behalf of any one client, that we can do more than just be their lawyer and their advocate in the courtroom. By and large, we represent people, I like to think of them as good people who do bad things. And it takes a certain kind of person to do that work. And the fellows come to the program already with that perspective. It's full of commitment, but it's also full of, of joy. You know, to be able to represent somebody that's never been represented before in a trial context is, is pretty powerful. And to give somebody the ability to fight back when they haven't been able to. Being able to fight for people who have no power no money, nothing in the world but us. I stand between my client and a jail cell. It, it's an incredible privilege to play that role. Our fellows do everything that they can to make sure that if indeed they're going to get a conviction, that it's going to be hard fought.